Now available in paperback and coming to Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, Dark Succubus, the man who rules the world, is tempted by a sultry succubus in this all-new John Haynes series adventure. Get John Haynes, Dark Succubus in paperback or pre-order on Kindle Unlimited today. I recently read an article on Cosmic Book News that, if it is true, could spell the end of DC Comics and possibly lead to the second implosion of the comic book industry and lead to the industry falling to a level not seen since the complete collapse of the 1950s. Now, if this article is true, DC Comics' business decision here would have a devastating effect on the industry overall. Now, Dan Dido is proposing that the classic DC characters of Clark Kent Superman, Diana Prince Wonder Woman, Arthur Curry Aquaman, Hal Jordan Green Lantern, Barry Allen or Wally West Flash be moved over to the Black Label line at a higher price point of $7.99, and that the new 5G DC Universe that he's creating, featuring your Lucius Fox Batman, your Cassie Sands Mark Wonder Woman, your son of Captain Boomerang Flash, and possibly a black female Green Lantern, these books would be priced at $3.99. Now, the point here is to, as I see it, try to steer people over to the 5G characters by having them at a lower price point and then having the people who want the classic characters pay for them at a higher price point with the black label line. However, this is not a smart business decision because as a publisher, I know that the price point for comics has already reached its threshold at $3.99 and people are just not going to pay $7.99 for DC Comics with featuring their favorite characters because comics have already reached the threshold as related to the price point and to go higher than that really lowers the value of comics especially now that comics have to compete with products that feature a higher entertainment value per dollar because it doesn't matter if a comic is 32 pages or 64 pages at $7.99, that's just too rich for many collectors' blood, especially now that they can go over to places like Netflix and get an entire month of video content for $8.99, and they can go over to Warner Brothers' own DC Comics streaming service at, I believe, $8.99 a month and get to see almost every DC cartoon and practically read almost every classic DC Universe comic book, all for a low price point of $7.99. So Dan Dido's business decision really isn't a smart one in terms of publishing new content, because the new content is at a higher price point and entertainment value per dollar that's higher than even products being offered like the DC Universe streaming service and when you take all of these comics together and compare them to many of the streaming services like Disney Plus, Hulu and Netflix you could prob you can get practically an entire month's worth of entertainment for the price of four or five comic books so this is not a very smart business decision when you consider that many of the customers that were buying those classic characters, this is not a very smart decision because the median age of those customers is 45 and going up. So trying to charge them, these people, more money for characters that they like, this is just not a very smart business decision, especially when you consider that many of those customers have more options out here for their dollar, whether it be those streaming services or going out here and putting in a pledge for a far better comic book by one of these indie creators on Kickstarter or Indiegogo. So your Dan Dido is shooting himself in the foot by going out here and trying to make people pay more for the classic characters 
at the in the DC universe they want. Moreover, he's not really incentivizing people to go out here and pick up these 5G characters on this 5G timeline because many of the people out here they already aren't interested in many of these 5G characters and many of the people who go to the comic shops to buy comic books they aren't interested in buying these characters because they've already been burnt badly by DC's New 52 in 2011 they've been burnt badly by the convergence I believe in 2013 they've been burnt by the rebirth in 2016 and they look at 5G and they look at how the quality of DC Comics has declined and they have no incentive to buy these characters, especially when they can they pale in comparison to the iconic characters of DC Universe. And most people, when they think about these characters being these force diversity characters, it makes them think of how dreadful your what was called SJW Marvel was in its attempt to kill off iconic characters and then replace them with these diversity token characters which paled in comparison to the original characters because none of those characters had the same mission, none of those same characters had the same tragedies, none of those same characters had the same motivation, so they came across as pale imitations and because they came across as pale imitations this is what led to Marvel Comics practically losing 95 percent of its sales in 2015 and Marvel Comics still has not recovered from that decision to implement the so-called diversity initiative many comic fans called SJW Marvel. And DC Comics doing this 5G and going out here to implement this 5G could have a similar disastrous result because of the distribution of comic books because most comic books are not sold in places like Barnes and Nobles, Amazon.coms, newsstands, or your drugstores or your Walmarts anymore. Most comic books that are monthly are sold in comic book stores. And the primary audience that buys comic books at comic book stores are primarily white males who are usually in their 30s and 40s and 50s and most of the men in that group are used to Bruce Wayne as Batman, Clark Kent as Superman, Diana Prince as Wonder Woman, Arthur Curry as Aquaman, your Hal Jordan, Kyle Rayner, Guy Gardner or Jon Stewart as Green Lantern or Barry Allen or Wally West as The Flash and if they don't see those characters then they have no reason to buy the comic books. So they, what your DC Comics doesn't understand is 5G may possibly be as dead on arrival as SJW Marvel because Diamond only distributes to comic book stores and if those comic book stores are going to feature these 5G books, even if they are at a lower price, most comic fans have no incentive to buy them because it does not feature their favorite characters. So those books may possibly be dead on arrival, and that may be because most people just aren't going to be interested in a Lucius Fox Batman when we've grown up with Bruce Wayne for over 80 years, and most people want to see Bruce Wayne as the Dark Knight. They want to see Clark Kent as Superman. They want to see Diana as Wonder Woman. And these are the characters that everybody knows, everybody has grown up with for generations, and people just don't have an incentive to go out here and buy new characters, especially when you consider the dire straits of the industry and the complete instability over at DC Comics, because DC's universe has just been so unstable that people have no incentive to go out here and buy any comics whatsoever because just when people are starting to get into a comic like the 
Jurgens and Tomasi Superman run, and people were starting to pick that book up on the regular. Dan Dido rank, yanks the rug out from under them, replaces the creative team with Brian Michael Bendis, and as Bendis comes in, he derails all of the hard work that Jurgens and Tomasi did, building Superman back up into a popular character by establishing a super family and making the character interesting again. So people, just when they're coming into a run, they start to get frustrated because Dan Dido comes in and yanks the rug out from under them. And this 5G is the ultimate rug yank for many comic fans out there because many comic fans, after the rebirth, they were anticipating that hopefully this and the Doomsday Clock would eventually lead to the return of the classic DC Universe. But instead of Dan Dido giving us that return to the classic DC Universe, he yanks the rug out from under comic fans yet again by talking about a 5G timeline and coming in and talking about moving the classic characters over to the Black Label. And if he does this, what it's going to do is lead to the third DC implosion and possibly the complete implosion of the comic book industry, practically crashing it back to the level of the 1950s. Because at this point, we have had comic shops closing all across the country for the last couple of years. We had 60 comic stores close, I believe, in 2017 and more close in 2018 due to so many bad comics becoming to the point where they're becoming where they're just sitting there on the shelf and the shop owners can't get rid of them and the reboots make it where nobody has incentive to go buy these back issues so a lot of these comics are just sitting there rotting on the shelves and the store owners are having to eat the cost and if DC goes ahead with this it may alienate so many DC Comics fans that they wind up not wanting to ever buy DC Comics again because $8 to see your classic Bruce Wayne, Clark Kent, and Diana Prince um, versions of Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman is just too rich for many comic fans' blood when you consider that you can get many other products out here at a, at a, at a similar price point. I mean... The Temptation of John Haynes, a novel with 400 pages, is only, I believe, about, what is it, seven, I think it's, let me, I have to check, it's, I think this is about $15, $16, or $17, no, I think it's $18, but you, for the price of two comic books, you get a 400-page novel, or you, for the same price, you can get one of these Isis and Esteem series books, and you're getting a full story, not just the start of a story. I mean, a comic at 32 pages for $7.99, when you can get an ISIS series book for $7.99, it just, it's a higher entertainment value per dollar, and people would rather pay $7.99 for Dark Succubus, or ISIS All That Glitters, or E-Steam Goddess Of, because they're getting a whole complete story with a beginning, middle, and an end, and that's what people are willing to pay for because they are getting a higher entertainment value per dollar. But with your DC Comics, I mean, why would I want to pay $8 for a comic book? And it just seems kind of foolish in an industry where people are struggling to pay $4 for a comic book and many people are balking at $4 to raise the price of comic books at DC Comics, and I believe that if they go ahead with this plan, it could possibly lead to the complete implosion of DC Comics, and again, the comic book industry overall, which has been struggling over the last few years, because the big two comic publishers, Marvel Comics and DC Comics, have struggled to produce quality comics, and with them not able to produce a consistent catalog of quality comics every month. What has happened is this has led to people stopping their pull lists, stopping the foot traffic at comic stores, and this, again, 
is going to lead to the implosion of the comic book industry because if there are no venues to sell comics, then it, there's no reason for publishers to publish comics because the only place that sells comics at this time are your comic book stores. They are the only place where you can pick up brand new material. And the, if they cannot sell brand new print material, then the industry has no venue to sell comics that are brand new. And eventually the industry just implodes once again. And it may not be able to recover from this implosion. And this is something your Dan Dido is not thinking critically about as related to the industry. He's so obsessed with trying to force his brand new 52 version of the DC Universe on to readers that he cannot see the damage he is doing not only to the DC brand, the DC Universe, but to the overall comic book industry, which has already suffered as a result of the complete failure of what was called SJW Marvel and the complete failure ever since 2011 as related to the rebooting of the DC Universe under Dan Dido's mismanagement and before that the complete implosion of DC Comics under Dan Dido's leadership because as he continues to try to shoehorn this dark, dreary, depressing story model onto readers. Readers continue to reject this for this dark story model, and to him to compound it with a forced diversity initiative would lead to so many people who were already teetering on not buying comics walking away, and that's compounded with the damage he has done by allowing writers like Tom King to destroy characters like Batman. And this is just, it, when you look at Dan Dido's decade, two decades of failure, it's just mind-boggling. And this 5G plan would be practically the absolute end of the comic book industry. Now, many people don't be believe that the comic book industry would die as a result, but with one of the major competitors at this point going this way this would be the end of it because at 799 it's just too expensive for anyone to pick up a 32 page comic book i mean that costs more than john haynes dark succubus when you look at the price point and you pick up four or five of those comics because again you're only getting the start of a storyline whereas in dark succubus you're getting a whole storyline for $7.99, and for $18, you can pick up a 400 page book. And you could also get ebooks on Kindle for far less. So, this compounded again with the streaming services, DC's own streaming service, costing less. And you can get access to every DC cartoon like Batman the Animated Series, Batman Beyond, Justice League, um, Young Justice and every DC comic ever published, your Dan Dido is literally proving to the world that he is grossly incompetent, grossly unqualified to run DC comics, and has no idea on where to take the DC brand in the 21st century. So when I look at your Dan Dido, this decision, if he goes along with it, this would be the death knell for DC comics, and it would be the death knell for the comic book industry because if one of the big two falls at this point, they take practically every comic shop with them because it's those big two that keep all of the few people who are still in the game coming to the shops, coming and making their pull lists. And it's those two, it's those big two that keep people interested in buying not only those comic books in the store, but also has them going out here to buy indie comics. So a lot of indie publishers, they really need to go and have a talk with Dan Dido, people at Dark Horse, people at Image, people at Dynamite, people at Boom, because this 
is going to lead to the implosion of their business because if DC falls and Marvel, which is already teetering as related to its publishing division falls, then the whole industry is going to have its second collapse that was as bad as the one in the 1950s. If you'd like to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to pick up some of my SJS Direct titles like John Haynes' Dark Succubus, Isis All That Glitters, East Steam Goddess Of, and books like The Temptation of John Haynes, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.